I'm Alana Irving. I'm executive director of the Open Source Collective. We are a nonprofit who works on sustainability in the open source ecosystem. The sustainability problem has been well known in the open source community for quite a long time. It was back in 2014 when the Heartbleed vulnerability in OpenSSL happened and it really brought this conversation to the fore, but we knew about the problem even then, and here we are in 2020, and this problem is still persisting. So why is that? One of the reasons is because the world of open source, a distributed, collaborative, commons-based approach, that's a very different world from the world of companies, capitalism, where most of the money is in our society, and getting those worlds to connect is really challenging. The incentives really are different, but open source developers are motivated by is different, and are often very underappreciated, very under-resourced, and yet somehow they're still held responsible when things go wrong. One example of this, I want to tell you about uh, my friend Dominic Tarr. We're both from New Zealand and uh, run in overlapping circles, so I've got to hang out with Dominic a bit. He is an incredibly intelligent and incredibly prolific programmer. Uh, he has made hundreds of packages on NPM that get hundreds of millions of downloads per week. Um, he's a wizard, and I mean that literally. This is a picture of him uh, giving a conference talk with a Doritos bag on his head uh, as a wizard hat. He lives on a little boat um, where she sails around wherever he wants to go. It doesn't have running water. He has a solar panel. The point is, Dominic is free. You cannot buy him. He doesn't really need money. You can't tell him what to do. He works on the code that he wants to work on. He builds things that he's interested in. He is intrinsically motivated. One of his projects, Event Stream, this is a package that he made many years ago, had a problem recently. There was sort of a big dust up, a big scandal about it. He had moved on. He had well moved on. He said that he not only had moved on from this package, but he made something else which he thought was a better solution. And then he moved on from that and made something else which is an even better solution. And he's completely over it. But this package event stream was out there, popular, used by a lot of people in a lot of people's dependency trees, millions of downloads a week, and he was having to continue to support it and didn't feel he wanted that responsibility anymore. So he's trying to walk away from it. And somebody reached out to him offering to help maintain this package and it seemed to be a good faith offer so he gave this person access and then it turned out that they were a scammer and turned it into malware. And he put out a statement after this talking about how he made this thing for fun and if it's not any fun anymore, what is he meant to be getting out of it? Why does he still have a responsibility to continue to support this package that he made years ago forever while the people who are using it currently are not contributing? And he said he sees two solutions to this sustainability issue. The second one here, that everybody should take part in maintaining the code that they use. This is the sort of ideal of the free software movement. This is the pure approach. The reality of maintaining a commons in our capitalist society is this first option paying the maintainers. And that's the one that we work on. Funding open source is hard. There's a lot of friction between those two separate worlds. There's a lot of pain points and barriers between them. Uh, people have come up with a lot of good ideas for how to support open source. Each of these represents many success stories, but also each of these methods has its drawbacks and no one of them has managed to solve the whole problem for the whole ecosystem. Relying on volunteers, we've just seen why that uh, is problematic. Hiring devs in-house, sometimes companies can hire an open source developer and have them bring their project in-house and get paid to work on it. Sometimes they can pay their staff developers to make pull requests to an open source project and that can work, but an open source project might have a couple of founders or a couple of key maintainers and be used by millions of companies that can't all hire those people. And even if you devote some of your staff time to making pull requests, there's no guarantee that those pull requests are gonna be merged. And finally, a lot of open source devs are not hireable. They won't work for you. You can't make them want to be an employee of a corporation if they don't want to. Open core, dual licensing services, these are all approaches uh, which can work and have worked, but kind of force open source maintainers to become business people. If they don't want that, it can be not very effective. Looking at this from the ecosystem point of view, now, we don't want developers to be stuck maintaining something that they made seven years ago and have moved on from. We want them to be making the next innovative thing and putting it out for the whole ecosystem. We all benefit from that. Uh, we don't want people to burn out and for projects to implode that other people are depending on. We don't want to force people to wear suits who don't want to wear suits. We want to enable people to move on and for the project and the community to continue. So when it comes to donations, our approach is really about donations to the project as a collective so that the original founder isn't stuck and even if they move on, the funding and the community can continue to be supported. 
Here is a really amazing Twitter rant about why it's so hard for companies to, to donate to open source projects. These different worlds are incompatible in many ways. Um, in order for a company to give money, they can't just send money to some random person. They have processes they have to go through. There has to be invoices, there are contracts that are signed, there has to be a legal entity involved. Um, the person on the inside of the company who's trying to make this happen has to convince their you know, accounts payable people and blah, 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 blah. And most people who are in these different worlds just don't understand how hard these things are for people in the other world. We're a bridge. Open Source Collective is a bridge or an API between these two different worlds. Here's how it works. Once upon a time, the world was full of triangles. Human organizations like companies that are solid, top-down, and pretty inflexible. Then the internet happened, making it easy for people to collaborate between and outside triangles as open communities working for a common goal. Call them circles, collectives of people working together on software, community projects, activism, just about anything you could think of. This circle is a collective called Spherio. They build open source software. Like many circles, they're open and flexible. Spherio has contributors and users around the world, and it isn't owned by anyone. It's hard being a circle in a world designed for triangles. Spherio sometimes needs things like a bank account and a way to pay taxes, but they don't want to stop being a circle. The Pyramid Company loves Spherio's open source software. It's critical to their business, and they want to support it. But in our world, triangles can only give money to other triangles, because they need things like invoices. Open Collective is a home for circles in a triangular world. We provide the tools circles need to thrive. We make it easy for circles to fundraise, accept sponsorship, and pay expenses without needing to become a triangle. Everything on Open Collective is fully transparent, giving circles and their supporters access to financial info whenever they need it. We take care of taxes, admin, reporting, accounting, so Spherio can focus on their code and their community. Now, circles and triangles can live happily ever after, and together we can start smoothing out the corners of this triangular world. Open Source Collective is a nonprofit who offers a service where we take care of all of the painful stuff around sharing money and supporting open source with money so that funders and maintainers don't have to worry about it so they can have a much easier time. And we call what we do fiscal hosting because it is really similar to software hosting with an open source project, you can either host it yourself and take on all the work and bother of maintaining a server and, and your own instance and updating it and blah, blah, blah. Or you can outsource that and pay someone else to host it for you. You can outsource the hosting of your legals, financials, your bank account. We take care of all of that stuff. We have brought in over $7 million for over 2,000 open source projects. And that has been paid out in over 5,000 different expenses. And each of those represents a plane ticket to go speak at a conference, a lot of stickers that's been printed, somebody's full-time wage for a month. We do have quite a few people making their full-time living doing open source and getting paid through Open Source Collective. One of those is Webpack. Their budget is around $400,000 a year through our platform. Here's how they're using some of the features. You can set up different tiers, different ways, uh, levels at which people can sponsor or contribute. Those sponsors then show up on your page where you can you know, thank them and celebrate the people who are supporting you and also have transparency to your community about um, who's putting money behind it. The budget is all transparent. You can see how much does this project have in their balance and what are they spending the money on. So this provides some accountability back to the funders and to the community. I'll tell you about a few different examples of people doing uh, interesting and diverse things with their collectives. Babbel, for example, offers sort of a VIP support deal for their major sponsors where you can get a direct line to one of the key maintainers of Babbel. Jay Hipster runs a very successful paid issue bounty program where people can come along and pick out one of these bounty issues and if they solve it then they get paid the bounty for that issue and that's really reinvigorated their whole project. From the funder side, Front End Masters does trainings, technical training, and they give a lot back to open source. And that really stems from the founder of Front End Masters has a personal experience as an open source developer and just really understands the value of open source and why it's so important to give back. Another example, Samsung Next. This is an example of a large funder who we can work with and by having a partnership, 
make the process of distributing out a bunch of grants much, much easier <laughs> for everyone involved. We can have one contract and one financial transaction. They send the money over and then they can just frictionlessly distribute it out to as many projects as they want to. And it makes it possible for them to uh, give out more funding and make more grants to open source projects. Once the channel is there, once we have that agreement and partnership in place, money can start coming through that channel much more freely. So, you know, for example, we have a partnership with Google. Um, there was, a, you know, a little bit of work to set that up a couple of years ago. But then the other week I got an email from somebody at Google saying, oh, we're going to send through another half million dollars to give to open source. And it's just, that's all it takes, that one line email, and it's all set and ready to go. So I really believe this is bringing in more resources for open source projects. We work on the ecosystem level, and I think that's really key. You know, we don't represent any particular company or technology or framework. Our agenda is to be the voice for all of our thousands of diverse projects under our umbrella and to support sustainability in the ecosystem. We are a nonprofit and that is our mission. Um, and that makes some really interesting things possible. Uh, one of which is Sustain. Uh, so Sustain is a coalition of people in the ecosystem who want to talk about open source sustainability. It started as a conference and that's happened um, three years in a row, having a large summit and has really grown um, to lo more local events, a podcast series, uh, working groups, and we've been able to partner with academia, corporations, foundations, independent open source developers, and bring them all together because we are that neutral ground. Fast responders, another great example. When COVID-19 hit, when the pandemic hit, a whole bunch of open source conferences and events were just suddenly canceled. And the ecosystem really relies on those for um, funding and for lots of other important aspects of community development. So very quickly, we were able to bring a bunch of stakeholders together. We held a virtual fundraiser and raised $115,000 and put the call out saying, if you if you need help, if you need your plane ticket refunded, or you need problems with your venue or all this stuff that has to do with event cancellations, get in touch and we will help you out. And we've also been able to do cool things like hooking up volunteers with projects in need and training people about how to uh, host their event online, for example. FOSS Contributor Funds. This is the brainchild of Dwayne O'Brien from Indeed, and we've partnered up to uh, push it out into the world. A FOSS Contributor Fund is where a company or a university or any institution sets aside usually a large budget and then engages their employees, their technical staff, in deciding where the money's going to go. It means that uh, funding actually reaches the projects that engineers actually really care about, and then also it's great for employee engagement, and it just democratizes the whole process. Back your stack, it's a tool that analyzes your dependency tree, tells you what your dependencies are, and then connects you up with ways you can financially support those dependencies. It's only a small part of a much bigger picture about dependency trees, so now we're partnering up with other people uh, looking at dependency trees and mapping the open source ecosystem from the perspective of sustainability and the health of open source projects. So partnering up with OSI and Chaos and um, several other actors in that space who are interested in this question. So we have an integration with GitHub sponsors where you can plug in uh, your collective to GitHub sponsors and the money will flow through and that enables you to sign up to GitHub sponsors instead of as an individual with a sponsor button on your personal GitHub profile, you can put a sponsor button on your repo on your GitHub organization page and get, make the funding go to the project instead of a person. We also have integrations for accepting Bitcoin um, and other sort of external or third party revenue streams can be integrated into your open collective budget. All of this is about us being a bridge between those two worlds, between the world of open source and the world of money. And the invitation is to get involved, support collectives, support the projects that you use, uh, start collectives for your projects, accept support, join our coalition initiatives. I really think the only way we're gonna solve the sustainability question in open source is by taking this ecosystem view and all working together.